Lips have released a part two of the June Alpha update. So this is gonna be the last Alpha update, I'm pretty sure, before they close um, Alpha, which will be on July 6th, I'm pretty sure. I'm not for certain 100%, but we're gonna go ahead and see what changes they made in part two. So part one was a big major update for um, New World. It gave us a lot of information about balances and um, weapon specs and PVP and war and factions and territory. Well, let's see what part two says. So greetings adventurers. Yes, greetings. <laughs> As promised, the second part of the June update has arrived. This update is focused on polish, balance, and bug fixes as we prepare for the closed beta in July, which is July 20th, guys. July 20th is the closed beta and our full launch on August the 31st. You can follow us at Play New World and stay tuned to this site for more updates as we continue to polish and tune New World. Click here for part two of the June release notes. So, part two two i'm looking at these characters up at the very top and i don't know what to think of the um last three of the four but the first one looks like it is an original um skin of a character that we have seen previously in um new world so the second one looks like maybe it is um part of the, uh, let's see, part of maybe the dynasty in Epskin scale along with the third one and maybe the fourth one. Ooh, I don't know if that one would be part of Epskin scale or not. It doesn't look like it would belong. But anyway, let's go ahead and see what the June update entails today. So, in general, they added two types of PvE faction missions, Assassinate and Elite. Assassinate missions challenge players to take out specific high threat foes. And Elite missions send players to take on a Turnum's most dangerous villains and their minions. <laughs> Are we calling the little ones minions now? <laughs> These missions are higher difficulty with a higher reward. It's recommended that you bring a friend. So this is the first time that they have ever talked about grouping up in New World besides, you know, the um, Outpost Rush, which is the 50 versus 50, the wars, or um, the regular PvP action and the um, expeditions. So, it looks like maybe we can have, like, maybe a group of maybe two or three. I don't know. That'd be a good question for the devs. They polished territory quests with updates to tracker text and map pins, and they reduced the weight cost for resolve fast travel by 20%. So, that was a new update that they did back on the first part in part one of June, was the Azoth fast travel. They implemented fast travel not just in between settlements but in between points of interest so you'll see points of interest on the map wherever you are in new world there will be like the um i think they said shrines or something i think is what they said in the last one and you'll go to it and you'll be able to fast travel to i think just settlements that's the question I have for the devs. Is it just settlements or is it fast traveling between those points? Um, third thing is invasion rewards are now tied directly to a player's scoreboard score. Cool. So invasions were based upon, invasion rewards were based upon your um, group for the invasions. Now, everybody's been asking them about these war declarations so, they had a war declaration update. Now, a war 
is a challenge between two factions. I think it is a 50 versus 50 option, but you do not have to fill up that 50 versus 50. It can be a 50 versus 20. However many people show up to wars. Now the wars I don't think are limited to just level 60s. I think it is open to anybody who is able to join a faction, which I think you're able to join a faction at level 10 or 11. Now, it really depends on the um, company that holds the territory of who participates in the wars. So, if you have, like, let's say you're limited to 50 people and you have, you know, 60 people sign up. 90% of them are level 60. Are you going to put, you know, a level 15 or a level 20 in? That is up to the um, company themselves. Um, so, War Declaration has been updated to reward the most active companies and the influence rates with a higher chance of being selected as the Vanguard. So, it is between companies. All companies in a faction are no longer eligible to declare war when a territory is thrown into a conflict state. <laughs> I can see that really being confusing. <laughs> to be eligible, a company must have contributed to at least 10% of the total influence required to throw the territory into conflict. So... <laughs> I can see that being a big part of the update. They probably had these little companies that didn't do very much influence and threw the whole war and faction over <laughs> to, to declare war. I can see that happening. In the unlikely event that no company contributes over 10%, any company will be eligible to declare war. So, <laughs> if you have 20 companies over... um. 20 companies under the faction and none of them are able to contribute over 10%. Any of those companies would be able to declare war. <laughs> but if you contribute at least 10%, you, you are able to. <laughs> but if you don't, Everybody has to be under the 10%. So the war declaration button now indicates a company's eligibility to declare war. If more than one company declares war on the same territory during conflict, the amount of influence the company contributed towards the conflict increases its chances to be selected as the vanguard. So, <laughs> the more influence you put towards the conflict it raises your vanguard okay <laughs> that was a major major update for the war um for new world the next is pvp everybody has been complaining that there's not enough pvp there's always pve so you want a pvp updates you've got pvp updates in a continued effort to support PvP, we've reduced gear's durabil durability loss due to PvP death. Increased XP for PvP kills. And adjusted camp respawning mechanics to make faction control points battling more interesting. I don't like where this is going. Players flagged for PvP receive 50% less durability damage to their equipment, both equipped and in their backpacks, when killed by another player. 50% less durability damage to anything equipped and anything in their backpack. So anything stowed away in your sack? Is it a sack or is it a satchel? I think it's a satchel. It's not a backpack, devs. <laughs> I don't think they had backpacks back then. 
They increased the XP players receive for PvP kills and added rewards for players that have been alive longer. Killing a player that has been alive for longer than an hour will now reward four times what the max used to be. So, they have a timer on them now. But you will receive four times the reward of XP for killing them. Okay. <laughs> that might, be, might turn me on to PvP. Hmm. When flagged for PvP, choose to respawn at a camp activates an incrementally increasing respawn cooldown. Say what? For each subsequent camp respawn, this cooldown increases. Okay. If the player chooses to respawn elsewhere, for instance, a settlement, the cooldown will continue counting down in the background. But that's a camp. Is that Chris? That can't be Chris. Sorry, I had to check and see if that was Chris, guys. If the player dies while flagged for PvP, while the cooldown is counting down, the time increment will be added to the current value. Ooh. So it'll increase the cooldown. Hmm. This makes respawning out of settlement and running back into the fray a great way for players to lower their camp cooldown. But what if their camp is right there at the settlement? Just saying. And then we finally have progression updates. So, we've been getting these progression updates kind of regularly over the course of the development. So, they reduced the XP required to level by 20% for all levels after level 7. So, from what that tells me is that people complained it was hard to level up. But then again, back, I don't know if it was the previous update, part 1 update, or if it was before then that they made it harder to update. I mean, harder to get XP. So, eh. <laughs> the increase in the previous... The previous update... <laughs> combined with the changes to corruption breaches reduce the speed of leveling too much. This change should bring a nice middle ground between what we felt was quote unquote too fast in May and the overly tuned changes introduced in the June part 1 update. So it was June part 1 update that they did reduce the XP for both um, they increased it to level up, but they reduced it for corruption breaches. I think they eliminated it for corruption breaches, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> and they doubled the amount of XP from repeatable expedition request. Quest. <laughs> not request, quest doubled an incentive to do expeditions. Per se, tell me. Town projects have been fixed, improved, and adjusted in a variety of ways. Changed the reward granted for completing missions. The reward will now more accurately reflect the level of effort required by different missions. Also, if you had a really hard mission, you get a lot of XP now. Thanks, Dubs. Reduce the amount of required materials to complete town project 
missions when the items are rare or valuable. So you eliminated going to the trading post. Because we couldn't find it. Got it. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> I mean, I'm not... I haven't been playing, but that's what it sounds like. A larger selection of missions are now available for the town upkeep project to bring it in line with other projects. So it sounds like they have a wider selection for us now than what they did previously. Now, thinking all the way back in the preview last August, I think you only had three options per section. So I think it was three, six... I think it was six whenever you went to the town project board. Correct me if I'm wrong. They reduced the XP bonus granted from leveling up territory standings. But isn't there a territory standing for XP gain? Or am I think or am I imagining that? So they reduced it? <laughs> Uh, what? I'm confused. They adjusted the amount of territory standing gained from crafting as some crafted items could generate disproportionately large amounts of standing. Uh, I understand that. Quests that reward specific items should now award items aligned with the intended level of the quest. Okay. They increase the trade skill XP for crafting jewelry items. But they decrease the trade skill XP for crafting jewelry components. So... Doves. You have to make the components before you can craft the items. Or am I thinking that the opposite way around? That you have to craft the items to craft the components. Can I get a spot check on that, guys? Because that don't sound right. <laughs> that don't sound right at all. Because... If you craft a necklace, you have to craft the chain to craft the necklace. So you're giving me decreased trade skill XP for crafting the chain, but you're increasing my XP for crafting the necklace. Doesn't that level out? Isn't that apples for apples? <laughs> or am I thinking that really, really weird at that point? Trade skill XP for cutting gems has been increased. That's different. Adjusted harvesting XP for XP to fall more in line with weaving progression. Okay. Yeah. Weaving is tormentous. Or it was during preview. Adjusted weaving and leatherworking trade skill XP curves to better align with the amount of gathering necessary to re to achieve a similar level and their respective gathering skills. Devs, can we just talk about the elephant in the room? What about the logging skill and the woodworking skill? Can we talk about that? It's a big elephant in the room. It takes so darn to level up the logging skill compared to your woodworking skill. That's the elephant. That has not been thought of. Idea. <laughs> Loot and gear. 
We continue to add much more visual diversity to in-game weapons and armor sets. Well, we have seen that in the past with the in-game store update that they talked about. The above characters. The below characters, maybe. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll look at those characters here in a minute. Or that screenshot here in a minute. They, they have updated them. Visually. Faction Heavy Tier 5 Armor sets have new, unique visuals with a different look for each faction. So now you'll be able to tell which faction people are from if they are wearing Faction Heavy Tier 5 sets. What about all the other tiers? Huh? What about all the other tier deaths? Like Tier 1. Lost enemies have been split into lost and drowned types to differentiate the gear that drops from them. A new set of gear visuals have been applied to armor and weapons dropped by drowned enemies. So, are the drowned enemy... <laughs> enemy enemies? Is... <laughs> are the drowned enemies... Those that are the pirates, while the lost ones are those on the farm. Maybe. The Breach Ice Gauntlet has a new visual look. Just one. Just the Breach Ice Gauntlet. Don't we deserve new looks for all the Ice Gauntlets? Fire staffs and tower shields for lost, ancient, and corrupted enemies. Enemy, enemy families now have new color schemes that match the corresponding enemy family color sets. So enemies now have family color sets? You just said they have visuals that are set to drowned enemies. Now we have enemy family sets, color sets. What are we going to have next? Colors of color sets? <laughs> this is too much. They lost heavy and medium armor drops have a new look at tiers 3 and 4. Okay. And updated the visuals on Outpost Rush weapons. Good. Added weapon sets for Dynasty enemies in the open world. Dynasty. So we have Ancients. We have Lost. We have Drowned. We have Corrupted. We have Dynasty. We have Angry Earth. And Animals. Seven. Seven. Seven different enemy types. Seven. Unless you're counting the Elite. Update the visuals on the Dynasty Shipyard Expedition weapons. I still want to see what that expedition looks like, guys. And added some new armor sets with interesting visuals to the global open world drops. For example, a 17th century beekeeper's outfit. I have got to see what a... 17th century beekeeper's outfit looks like. Okay. Hmm. 
I'm looking it up, guys. Mm-mm. Mean I likey. Here it is, guys. 17th century beekeeper's outfit. Mm. You know what that reminds me of? The little circles in the face? Mm-mm. I'm not going to say what it reminds me of. Uh-uh. I would definitely be running screaming away from that people. <laughs> and you can quote me on that. I will be running screaming, not running and screaming, running screaming from that. No. No. They updated visuals for the tier 5 weapons dropped by Elite Angry Earth and Elite Ancient Enemies. Cool. And we have screenshots! So, looks like we have maybe a drowned enemy? I'm gonna go with drowned. <laughs> Ooh. I do like that, though. Don't look like a beekeeper's outfit, though. And the photo up top. <laughs> That don't look like a beekeeper's outfit either. No. They improved expedition drops by increasing the chances that expedition armor and weapons will drop with one or more perk than they did previously. Okay. Clothing with tra Clothing with trade skill related perks can now be found at elite points of interest in end game areas. So I gotta go to end game areas to upgrade my trade skill with clothing. Got it. So beeline to level 60. Go to Elite Points of Interest, get in-game clothing with trade skill related perks, and wear it, and do the trade skills. Got it. Increase special drops from Expeditions and Elite Points of Interest. We want to ensure that players feel rewarded for defeating some of the most dangerous enemies in Eternum. Ew. Got it. Significant, significantly increase the drop chance of named items from expedition bosses and mini bosses. I mean, we're hearing named items now. Added more equipment roll to elite POIs chest and adjusted the drop rate of other contents of elite chests. This will also impact chests found in expeditions. But didn't you say them would be found in expeditions? Yes. Okay. Expedition bosses will drop a wider variety and higher quality of loot when defeated and increase the drop rate of some named enemies in the open world. Simon Gray, maybe? No. <laughs> no. Or Scott? From New World? No. <laughs> no! Slightly increase the drop rate of items in the global named items list. 
At least one gear drop from an expedition expedition boss will guarantee a gear score increase provided by the boss is powerful enough to grant on the first place. Huh, huh. Did I misread the at least one gear drop from an expedition boss will guarantee a gear score increase provided the boss is powerful enough to grant on in the first place. That don't make sense. Crafted and dropped armor can now roll skill perks. Cool. Players can now salvage gear they received as drops into gold. Ooh. Gold? Did someone say gold? And repair parts. This will provide a new... Provide a great source of income for players and ensure all drops have been have a base value. Resources gained from salvaged item drops have been removed. Fooey. <laughs> so you don't get the wood and stuff anymore. Fooey. <laughs> we changed this to better balance salvage. And we felt this gave a much-needed boost to the value of gathering and refining. We wanted to reward players who leveled up their trade skills, and previously it was too easy to get high-end materials by killing enemies and salvaging the gear. Eh. I'm gonna say no comment. <laughs> Crafted trinkets now... Salvage into a lower tier. Raw version of the gem used to craft them to better fit a change. That enables any tier of trinket to be used any tier of components to craft it. Okay. This is a big update, guys. In an effort to tune the gold economy, we have some changes in the factory shop. They remove family coatings from the factory shop, which changes the emphasis on acquiring them for crafting. No. They added a special set of items to the fashion shop that enable players to change the attributes on their fashion equipment to a selection of different allocations. Cool. I like that. And prices of all fashion shop items have been adjusted to align with updated currency rates. Yay! Updated epic armor quests by adding the ability to upgrade several pieces of special armor granted as quest rewards in the mid to late game. The requirements for earning sets is exiting quests are spread out across 15 levels. Ugh. At the end of each quest, players are now granted the means to upgrade the low-level armor pieces to a powerful level of the final piece of the set. They tuned high watermark. Players' ability to earn items above their current gear score, outcome rates, and reduce the floor. So, items from powerful 60-plus level enemies don't drop at gear scores far below their power level. Cool. And the, tri the tri tribal loyalty charm, an early game quest reward, now provides increased constitution, which is health, instead of strength, so it is more universally applicable to its recipients while they are learning how attributes work and which playstyles they enjoy. So, Devs, what you're saying is that we get killed too often. Okay. I hear you. <laughs> Crafting and gathering. They updated fishing to include piranhas, dragonfish, spear tooth sharks, and stingrays to salvage into fish guts with a chance to also grant an extra unique item for each fish which can be used in alchemy. Spear tooth sharks. 
Don't want to get bit by one of those. Got it. Don't even know if I want to see one. They added the ability to combine lower item gems into higher tier gems at this stone cutting station. Players can now use any tier of solvent when refining gems. So there was different levels of solvent? There was only one level of solvent in preview. They tuned repair kit crafting cost. Now during preview, I do remember it getting more expensive when the gear score was higher. Did they fine tune that now? Let's see. So tier two, three, four, and five now require 55, 100, 175, and 350 repair parts to better align with the rate we see players acquiring parts in the alpha. Say what? That's a lot of repair parts. What's our max repair parts? T2 was increased from 40. T3 stayed the same. T4 was lowered from 200. And T5 was lowered from 400. Oh. Got it. Tier 2, 3, 4, and 5 now require 1, 2, 3, 3 individual craft mods down from specifically higher amounts over tiers. Okay. Reduce the wood requirement to make charcoal from 3 to 2. Well, I guess I know where I'm going to be putting my wood. It's in charcoal. But then I'm not going. But then I'm going to be leveling up my. Mm, okay. Increase the raw resource refinement cost of tier four and five refined resources by fifty percent and a hundred percent, respectively. For instance, star metal ingots now require six raw star metals instead of four, and artanium ingots require eight raw artanium instead of four. I never heard of those, but okay. Increase the resource cost of crafting epic crafting materials. Asmodium by one. I'll have an Asmodium. <laughs> My fine sir. Slightly increase the drop rates and quantities of gemstones found in standard ore veins, iron, and star metal. Cool. So now I'll find more gems. I'll be the gem queen. That's my title. New World, you can't use my title. No, 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 no. Remove the need of craft mods on the first tier of crafting trophies. These have been replaced with non-elemental with <laughs> with elemental es essences and normalize the rarity of all crafting mods to uncommon. Okay. Honing stones can now be crafted in bulk. Don't know what those are. Milk now has a chance to be found in any provisioning container in the world with a higher likelihood to be found in Winsward, Reekwater, and Brightwood. So milk don't come from cows. Or sheep. Got it. Milk comes from provisioning containers. I'll, I'll ask Walmart for a provisioning container next time. These containers will continue to drop... Uh, hold on. <laughs> Remove food granting trade skill bonuses from large provisioning containers. These containers will continue to drop fishing... Fishing? Finished meals of the health and mana reco recovery variety. We believe this change will re replace a greater emphasis on either crafting these me 
these meals yourselves or purchasing them from other players who have crafted them? I'll be crafting them. Quintessences are now epic rarity. Ooh. Titles and achievements. I've already given myself a title. Dear world, you can't use it. We've been working with the alpha community to refine and update the title system ahead of launch. Many players provided feedback that there were too many titles. And because of that, displaying a hard-earned title didn't feel special. Boo-hoo. Some titles have been removed and most will be earned only by completing higher level achievements. If you see someone with a title, you know they've worked hard to unlock it. And you want to make us envious of them? Is that what you want us to do, devs? Be envious of them? Because we can be envious. The title change UI now has a pronoun selector. You can decide if your character's title should use the he, him, she, her, or they, them pronoun when the text of the title show. Title allows it. Cool. Very inclusive of you guys. Move titles down on the overhead nameplate to display on the same line as the character's current company if they have one. Don't know where that is because I've never played since preview. So, I guess we will find out. Players can now disable achievement notifications. <laughs> I, I can see that actually being a... Yeah. <laughs> they added Steam achievements. Completing some in-game achievements will also grant Steam achievements. Now... New World, these Steam achievements, what kind of achievements? <laughs> they updated the UX and the UI. The intro cinematic just before character creation has been updated with new dialogue that better sets up Captain Thorpe's story. Another instance of Captain Thorpe. The main menu now includes a more streamlined flow when a player enters without an existing character, reminding them to re leading them right to world select. There is now a basic setting flow on initial character creation, which allows the users to common to choose common settings and adjust the screen brightness. The UI team focused on polishing the this release fixing 259 bugs if typing a direct message no longer makes a dit 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 bubble you can't see where your friend is i'm sad <laughs> chat now has a setting to display a dark background behind each message making them easier to read I thought it was already a dark background. Okay. Group health bars now indicate disconnected status when available. Huh? <laughs> Group health bars now indicate disconnected battle disconnected status when available. Okay. Or disconnected. Got it. Combat and AI. <laughs> we knew there was a combat update, guys. Enemy AI. Expeditions. Increase the damage of all expedition creatures by 10 to 20% to provide a greater challenge to players. Because expeditions weren't hard enough. You wanted to make it 10 to 20 times harder. For us players who have never been playing. Got it. So it's going to kick my butt as soon as I get, get in. Thanks, New World. <laughs> Combat. Update Constitution to have a diminishing return on the amount of health granted per level the more points you put into it. 
Previously, it started at 15 HP per attribute point and would gradually increase as you put more points into it to cap at 34. Now it starts at 25 HP granted and decreases gradually until you get 21 HP per attribute. This, this, this decreased the total HP granted from Constitution slightly from 12,175 to 11,325, but increase the amount of HP players get from Constitution at a lower rate. Eh. I don't like that. <laughs> Updated targeted healing. Press control, pressing control while a heal is active will now automatically perform a self-heal. Players no longer will have to hold control before casting the spell. That's good for our healers. And of course they had to do a weapons balance. The Great Axe. Execute ability now allows more rotation during startup. That it? That's all you wrote? The Bow. Reduce go to distance evade haste modifier effective from 33% to 15%. Reduce catch me if you can scare uh, skirmish skirmisher passive haste effect from thirty three percent to twenty percent. They reduce everything on the bow. Eh. They reduce everything on the musket. Huh. Life staff. Increased, okay. Which is good. <laughs> and of course the ice gauntlet. Huh. They increased some things and they removed some things and they replaced it. Okay. And then the fire staff, they reduced. Great. But nothing for the hatchet. And nothing for the great hammer. Huh. So that's it for today, guys. The June updates have been exciting for us as we work to polish, tune, and watch... The finishing details finally start to come together in the game. We're hard at work preparing for the July 20th closed beta, followed by our August 31st launch. We'll keep working with and playing alongside... Playing alongside? Excuse me, Ma? You ain't playing with me. I ain't playing Alpha. Alpha key, please. <laughs> Our alpha community to help inform in, inform our tuning and changes as we continue development. Keep an eye out for news at Play New World, and we'll see you in Eternal. Well, devs, you haven't been watching my videos, so I sent you guys an email. I would like to talk with you guys and give you some updates. I gave you one update in this one. It. And an idea. It was a perk. It accidentally came out. But I've got a lot of ideas up my sleeves, but they locked away, unfortunately. So, guys, that is everything that we have for today. That is all the updates for New World. I checked their um, Twitter. They didn't have anything updated except for just the um, part two update. But definitely tell me, guys, what you think so far of the June update. It was two big parts. Huge. I, I think they may actually be listening to the community now. Um, not me, though sad but um <laughs> but anyway guys i hope you have a good day a good night wherever you are in the world and 
I will see you guys on the next one. Bye!